Hello everyone, my name is Dion Davis and this is an introduction to the Learning with VR project. My partner Edvin Lee and I worked under the product owner Shaheen Vasai. The Learning with Virtual Reality project was created with the hope of making learning more interactive and accessible through the use of technology. The application is closely related to the Learning with Augmented Reality project and combines building information modeling, virtual reality, visual simulations, and interactive lessons to support interdisciplinary learning for building sciences. Here you can see a short GIF of the system before we began working on it. The application displays a 3D environment of the SIPA building and the area surrounding it. The application is well refined and allows for interaction with a variety of icons and building structures. Users can walk around and click on icons to view building component information, diagrams, and videos. Some building components will display some information when you hover over it. However, the application is only configured for deployment on PC, Mac, and Linux. The purpose of the new system was to make the Scope VR application compatible with mobile devices. Support for mobile user interaction a mobile compatible video player, and a variety of bug fixes and quality of life changes were added to allow for deployment to iOS and Android with a VR view using Google VR. Here you can see some of the features that were added, including a loading screen, a video player, and a button that allows the user to walk. On this slide you can see the use cases we implemented into the system. Users can view a loading screen, interact with the system via touch, and move via touch input. Users can also toggle a VR view of the system, which switches between on and off. They can view icons and interact with them via touch. Finally, they can view videos through the mobile video player. Here is a model view controller, or MVC, representation of the architecture of the system. The controller is composed of the scripts that detect user input and make changes to the model layer of the system. The model layer is composed of game objects and cameras in Unity that make up the game environment. The view layer is made up of the screens of the iOS and Android devices that the application is being run on and is rendered by the model layer. Here are the user stories that we worked on as seen earlier in the use case diagram. I will go into further detail for the first five in the following slides. The first user story is the loading screen. This was extremely important to the system because of the long loading time of the game environment. Before the screen was implemented, there was only a black screen during the load time of over one minute. The loading screen has an animation on the loading text to show the user that the application isn't frozen and hasn't crashed. Below the loading screen, you can see the sequence diagram of the system when the user opens the application and views the loading screen. The second user story is touch input. Touch input needed to be implemented for both Android and iOS so that users would be able to interact with the icons and other buttons in the application. The first image shows the sequence diagram for touch interaction. The second image shows the description that is displayed after tapping to click on an icon of one of the major components in the SIPA building. The third user story is movement via touch. Since users may be using a Google Cardboard headset with only one button for tapping, we created a button that users could click to toggle walking on and off. Otherwise, the user could also use a two finger press to toggle walking on and off. The first image here shows the sequence diagram for movement while the second image shows the button that can be clicked to toggle movement. The fourth user story is the mobile video player. A few of the icons in the application are linked to videos that the user can view. A mobile video player was implemented so that users could view these videos on Android or iOS. The first image shows the sequence diagram for playing a video. The second image shows one of the videos being played in the mobile video player. The fifth user story is the icon camera view. For this user story, a new camera was added to display the icons in the system. 
This camera was added so that they could be displayed in front of other objects in the system, letting users click on the icons regardless of what structures may be in the way. Again, a sequence diagram is shown for the current user story, and an image of one of the icons in the application is shown below. Here you see two of the tests that we used when developing our user stories. The first tests whether videos will play when a user clicks on a video icon. When the user clicks the icon, the video should play in full screen and then go away once the video is done. This test passed when VR view was not enabled. The second test is for movement with double finger touch. This test is making sure that movement is not activated if only one finger is used to tap. This test also passed as movement was not activated when only one finger was used to tap the screen. This is a demo of the Learning with Virtual Reality application. As you can see, the application is running in VR view. This is the loading screen and you could see the animation on the loading text to show the user that the system is loading the main scene. As you get into the application, you can see the SIPA building over here. You can look around, and if you look down, you can see the click to walk button. If you click it, you'll begin walking, and you could look where you want to walk. Whenever you want to stop, you just have to look down again and click that same button. You can see some icons here. If you click this icon, there will be a diagram that shows up, and you can also hide it if you click it again. There's also an icon over here. This icon would play a video, but videos aren't working right now on the VR view. But if you play this without the VR view, that video would play full screen. This wall over here, you can click, and it will show some of the major components of the building with some icons. If you click on one of those icons, it will give you some more information about that component of the building. If you click on another icon, it will zoom you to that description. And you could do, continue doing this as much as you want. We'll click to one more. And if you want to return to where you were, all you have to do is click the icon that you have open. And you can look around. There's a unhide button over here to make that wall reappear. And we can explore the building a little bit. If you follow this blue dotted line, you'll encounter some more of the icons and components of the building that you can interact with. So we'll go ahead and look at a couple more. And um, one of the issues that we have right now is that over on this pavement, you can't see the click to walk button, but you'll still see the circle open up. And here we go, we'll click this icon, see what it is. Another diagram. We can click it again to hide it. We'll move forward a little bit more. You'll see that circle open up where the button is. And we'll just check this last icon. It's another diagram. And you could continue. The blue dotted line goes inside the building. There's more stuff you can click on and view inside. And that's it for the demo. That pretty much wraps up the introduction video for the Learning with Virtual Reality project. Development was completed with Scrum Agile methodology using some of the technologies displayed in this slide. Scripts were coded in C-sharp in Visual Studio. The game environment was developed in Unity and deployed to both Android and iOS. Code was managed through GitHub 
and sprints and user stories were planned through Mingle. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, Dion, or my partner, Edvin, through email. Thank you for watching, and best of luck.